Hi folks, welcome to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. Back in the 70s, when they put the cannabis on the Controlled Substance Act, the technology and the research that was going on at the time on the, on the human brain and how the different substances around affected the brain uh, was very limited and very uh, archaic by today's standards. In fact, a lot of the, uh, the criterion that they used to place cannabis on Schedule One, along with heroin and, co and some of the other harder drugs, the reason they did that was from behavioral studies more than scientific studies. And they noticed how heroin addicts, when they would shoot up and all, it wouldn't be long that they would be wanting more and more and more and more. And so when they saw people smoking cannabis and things and how they like to just keep smoking it and all that, they thought, oh, it must be just like heroin. And that is really why that was the criterion they used back then to place it with heroin. Of course, in the 80s, they made stratospheric advances in the uh, study of the brain. And also in 1986, they uh, actually isolated uh, receptor sites in the human brain that were specific for cannabis, for specific for a THC. They, they were actual THC receptor sites in the human brain that we're born with. And so this, this really spurred a lot of activity in the, in the research area. And since the technology had improved and all, the, the types of experiments and research projects that were going on were really getting a good handle on how the brain worked and all. And in fact, the, uh, the, the, the Institute for, uh, for Drugs here in the United States, they shifted all of their research work. Try, uh, at the time, they were trying to find out you know, bad things about smoking cannabis and stuff. And they actually did a total shift when they found out that there was a natural brain receptor site that was uh, for THC in the human brain. Well, this, they shifted everything. They quit doing all this research trying to find bad things. And they actually were trying to you know, investigate this receptor site thing and all. And so, and this was a great event. This probably will be the one event that uh, when cannabis gets legal down the line, people look back and all, this will certainly be one of the, one of the main factors that uh, probably turned it all around. Uh, there were uh, many petitions done by Normal and stuff, and they had ignored them, and they usually just passed it all because we didn't have enough scientific and medical research to support any of that information and stuff. And, but after 1986, when they discovered these THC receptor sites in the brain, well, this opened up a whole other avenue. And uh, what, you, what, what you got to see, though, was absolutely amazing. Now, we're going to go through a little bit of brain chemistry right now. Just in basic terms, I'm going to kind of describe how the brain works. But in the brain, there are these uh, places known as receptor sites. And this is where different chemicals uh, that, that are known as neurotransmitters. Now, neurotransmitters take the signal from the neuron, the actual nerve cell themselves, and they facilitate the transfer of this uh, signal to a synapse area, the, the distance between the two nerves, and it passes the signal on down the nerve and, and to wherever it's going in the body. Now these uh, receptor sites, they're, they're responsible for your breathing, they're responsible for the cardiac, they're responsible for your walking, your motion, your balance. I mean, there's literally thousands of receptor sites in our brains, and each are facilitated by different neurotransmitters. Some neurotransmitters work in certain parts of the brain where different neurotransmitters won't work. And, and there are cases where you find multiple neurotransmitters even working on the same neuron. So it's, it, it's pretty wide open. But when they found the uh, cannabis receptor sites in the brain, this was a very different and unique situation. And here, let me tell you why. Because what they, what they found out in their studies, they, they had to make a synthetic THC that was very, very potent so they could do these research studies without them dragging out over a thousand different tests. They were able to duplicate the synthetic, real high potency THC, you know, a hundred times stronger than even the best THC you'd get out of a plant today. But, but what this did, it allowed the scientists to really do an in-depth study on these receptor sites. And what they found out, not only were there were specific receptor sites for these cannabinoids and stuff, but they found out that there were specific neurotransmitters for these cannabinoids. And, and these different sites, some of them were very, you know, maintaining different functions inside the body. There were, there were cannabis receptor sites found in the uh, part of the brain that controls memory. There were cannabis receptor sites found in the area that controls your immune system and uh, different things like that. So it really opened up an entire field of brain chemistry that nobody knew about. But what, what happens is these neurotransmitters they act like a go-between between the neurons and when there's a signal given by the nerve and it comes to the synapse where it has to cross over the junction there between the nerves and, and travel on down the next nerve neuron and nerve, nerve lining, this is facilitated by neurotransmitters. 
and there are specific cannabinoid transmitters in the brain. In other words, we were born with these. And uh, there's been a lot of research uh, going on prior to this period before they found the THC receptor sites. And all. They couldn't figure out why it, when people would just smoke gobs and gobs and gobs and gobs of pot, but nobody was overdosing on it. Nobody was having any problem. In fact, they weren't having any ill effects at all, and, and they were just scratching their heads. They couldn't believe it. I mean, you know, people drink too much alcohol, they can die from it. Heroin overdoses were, you know, they'd seen that. Coke people doing too much cocaine and the problems all that generated. Smoking too many cigarettes even, even eating too much food or, or taking too many prescription drugs. All of, this, all of these were observed in all these different substances substances and stuff, but they didn't observe it with pot and they couldn't figure out why. Well, in, once the THC receptor sites were found and the brain chemistry research and studies started going really full swing, well then they were opened up their eyes. The pot smokers knew this all along. We knew because we had all tried to smoke more than, than we could possibly, you know, try to get done in one night. And, and we know the, the, we never got higher. We never got in any situation where we felt like we're threatened and we certainly never felt like we, di we were going to die or anything. And, and this was the type of, of behavioral responses we were given to people when they'd ask and all I, I never felt that I don't think that could even happen at all so we sort of innately knew this even though the science and the research hadn't really proven why or nothing at that point but once the brain research started really getting full swing and all they figured out that there were a limited number of receptor sites in the brains that was capable for the cannabinoids to bond to now when you take drugs of abuse that are they're highly abused like alcohol cigarettes heroin cocaine these these types of drugs they affect a neurotransmitter in the brain known as dopamine and what happens is the dopamine is the neurotransmitter it facilitates the transmission of the signal from the nerve to another and these drugs of abuse the reason that they figured out that that these drugs fell into a line of certain abuses because they inhibited this action of the dopamine and when it and this is your pleasure center this is in the uh, corticocumbent region of the brain and they knew that this this was the pleasure zone in other words it was your reward center like when you eat something that tasted good you know the reason it tasted good to you is because of this dopamine chemistry that was going on and as the dopamine would act as a neurotransmitter and it would do its thing and get the signal across the synapse, then there would be a reuptake and then the signal would, would happen again. And that's just the normal flow of the brain chemistry. Well, when you, uh, drugs like alcohol and cigarettes and heroin and cocaine, these prevented this uh, dopamine reuptake. And so what it was in your pleasure center, you were just constantly getting re-batted re re with uh, pleasure just over and over and over. And that's what makes these drugs of that sort so addictive. And that's why people can overdose on them because the brain doesn't know when to tell them to stop. They're, they're one neurochemistry there that normally says, hey, that's already done now. Let's wait till this dopamine refigures itself and then it then the, starts the process over. Well, these drugs inhibited that, that particular movement from happening. So so the, and so as a result, overdose, uh, being able to do too much and all was, was very common. Strangely enough though, and they all, up, up till this point, they thought that's how cannabis worked too, but they couldn't figure out why there was anybody overdosing on it and all. But as it turns out, the cannabis does not follow this pathway. It does not use the dopamine pathway because we have specific receptor sites in the brain that are specific for THC and they're very limited. And also too, even with the higher potency THC, this, this effect even works quicker. The brain has an automatic shutoff response. In other words, when you smoke a, a real high grade of THC and you get stoned really high or stoned on it really quick, you don't just keep getting higher and higher and higher the more you smoke. And the reason is, is because the brain turns on this this alarm, if you will, or a switch. These, these uh, sites are just like switches in the brain. It's like your light switch when you flip it on, the light comes on. Well, these, these sites in the brains, the receptor sites, are like switches. And they found out with cannabis that the, the, that the uh, brain itself would shut down the response and there would be no more binding in these sites. <clears throat> and they found that as a result, they were very limited.
And so this is why you can't overdose on cannabis is because there's not this effect like you get with dopamine where the where the reaction itself is inhibited and then this pleasure you know sense just keeps going and going and going and you keep doing more and more and more and eventually you reach the state of overdose. You can't do that with cannabis because the receptor sites are not there for it to bind to. And the specific cannabinoid receptors, the neurotransmitters for these receptor sites are specific for cannabis. So it's this is a biosynthesis that occurs in human beings naturally. This isn't something that, you know, that, wow, you know, what, just because you smoke pot, you got cannabis in you. And that's not the case. Everybody is born with these receptor sites in their brain. And whether you use cannabis or not, they are present. And they are the main reason why uh, substances like cannabis is safe is because you can, no matter how much you smoke, no matter how much you try to take in, there's no way you're going to approach overdose. And this is why, because the brain has an automatic shutdown response and just absolutely will not allow any more of it to bind. And the part that doesn't get bound gets flushed out through your system, either through your waste and your feces or through urine and, and partially through the uh, the filtration in the kidneys and stuff in the liver. This was a very, very, very broad, broad, I mean, major discovery. I mean, when you look at the fact that cannabis can cause pain relief in the, in the parts of the body without doing debilitating effects like all of the narcotics and stuff do, I mean, this is God's gift from heaven, let me tell you. And the reason that, it's, that it works so well is because Okay, and the reason it doesn't cause heart attacks or cause people's lungs to collapse or anything like that is because none of the portion of the brain that controls the cardiovascular or the respiratory in these areas like that, that where the brain controls these these different functions you don't find the cannabis receptor sites it's impossible for the THC to bind in this part of the brain that's why it never does affect your respiration it never does affect the heart or cause heart attacks or anything like that which is typical of a lot of these other substances of abuse and this is one of the criterion that they that they look at when they when they when they study a substance is this electrical inhibition effect of the dopamine and if a substance does that in their studies and all, they consider it as, a, as an addictive substance and one that's going to be, you know, trouble to, to have out there for people. They didn't find that with the cannabis with these new studies. So that being one of the criteria of why they put it in Schedule 1 is, is a very good case in point to get it removed altogether. Plus, they said that it, that it was, uh, you know, had, had a widespread of abuse. Well, this is impossible. It's impossible for, a wide, for it to become widespread of abuse if the brain doesn't allow to do any any more damage that does than getting you high i mean that 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 very research there disproves all of that type of talk and when you look at the fact that in the early days especially when the the marijuana tax act was passed passed in the 30s and stuff they killed all the research on thc and all because it was just thought of as taboo and then the 70s they based it all on behavioral activity and stuff so there really was they were they were ignorant i mean they really jumped light years in the 80s compared to the 70s and since then they've even done gone even further and they've they've discovered now how these uh, cannabinoid receptors work in the different parts of the brain they understand why it controls nausea in cancer patients and stuff because uh, there are cannabis receptor sites in the part of the brain that control motion and balance and muscles and things like that so these these types of things that's why they're beneficials because those receptor sites are available cannabis also has receptor sites in the part of the brain that controls your immune system and and that just suggests suggest to the researchers and stuff that cannabis is an aid to your immune system. It makes sense. The, uh, one of the big problems and one of the uh, researchers that helped not only isolate the THC, but he's also the, uh, did a lot of important research on the receptor sites and stuff. He, he really believes that the fact that we have these natural THC receptor sites and all means that cannabis use really was not based on trying to alter some, you know, you know make us high or, or do some type of drug. He said, this was more of a natural emotion control thing, pretty much like what people take psychotropics for, you know, so they don't wig out and get depressed and stuff. Cannabis is a natural one, and that's why I said that these pharmaceutical companies and stuff, they know this now. The research has been out for about 15 years. They've had plenty of time, even longer than that. They've, they've had plenty of time to understand now what's going on with cannabis, and the thing about it is, it's beneficial. It's not detrimental in any way. In fact, it facilitates a lot of 
of the processes that go on in people's bodies, these cannabinoid receptors, what they do. And so for you to keep a substance that is actually beneficial, and people like myself that have used it for a long, long time, I've used it as an herb and all that, I've known the benefits of it. I mean, there was, it was just something about it when you used it. It just, that's how, that's the feeling you got from it. You never felt threatened or like you were in danger or that you were gonna die or you're gonna have a heart attack or pass out or anything. You never had that feeling, that never happened. And the reason being science has finally proved that what the pot smokers knew all along is that the brain will not allow it. It just absolutely is impossible for it to happen. And that's why you've never had an overdose ever on cannabis since the dawn of time. And it's why you've never had anybody go to the emergency room for it because this, it just cannot happen. So this is one of the main criteria that we could use to get this completely taken off any controlled substance whatsoever. And of course, the petition has to be filed to the DEA, and that is their job to chase after cannabis. And so that is why these petitions are very tough to get passed through there and all. There ought to be a public outcry because what's going on here is we have a beneficial herb that could actually help people, not only medicinally and help sick people and stuff, but actually it could become something that prevents disease and stuff if we incorporated it in our daily routine, just like we eat and all. And this is where the push has to be. So wake up, America. Quit bastardizing this plant. Quit making the devil come out in this, this demon y'all designed way back when just so y'all could lock people up and make money. This plant is vital to the to health, it helps the body. There's nothing wrong with it. Nobody's ever died from it. Nobody's ever owed overdosed from it. Let's get real. The joke's up, DEA. Your job is finished. Go out, start getting educated to do another job because cannabis is going to be legal. You no longer can pull this lie over the public. And I thank you for spending time in the Cannabis Corner.